Hello, I'm Joe Ferguson. Uh, this is my studio in Weston. I've been doing sculpture for 60 years or so, and um, if you'll follow me, we'll go inside. I made a male figure of colored glass and brass rod. Never content, I made a companion, a girlfriend, Viridiana. Then came the aha moment. I placed Viridiana's face in the back of my male figure and he became manbiguity an invented word. Hi, I'm Joe Ferguson, and I'm going to talk to you about linearity and creativity as they operate in our lives. Many people will say to me, as an artist, they'll say, I'm not very creative. I'm a linear person. And I wonder, every time I hear them say that, it upsets me to some extent, because we are constructed to use both the linear and the creative. The creative comes to us, though, in our dreams and imagination, in our emotions. And everyone has dreams, imagination, and emotion. But our schooling, the way we are taught, is linear and linear is a very safe way to do things in our lives it's predictable and it has a, has a, a has an ending now this is the ocean of knowledge imagine that this is just everything we know that is known and with linearity most of our lives and when we go to school we're taught our work begins um, in a linear way. We know at the beginning where we're going. We know all the steps along the way. If I was in, in uh, Boston and I want to go to New York, I have a map and I can look at it and visualize that trip. And it, it is the normal way to do things. It's efficient and it has its rewards, particularly in schooling, because it's a predictable way of monitoring children and giving them credit and seeing how well they're affected by what they're learning and that they are learning. I didn't have a linear disposition when I went to school, so I had a miserable time. Um, and I've wondered about that all my life, why I left school early school with such a low opinion of my own intellect was painful. And what I've come up with is that I am a creative person. Most of my life I've been a creative person. And creativity is not like the linear in the beginning. You don't know where you're going. You do have an impulse though, and you have a lot of energy, and you're going to be guided by these different things, the dream, your dreams, imagination, inspiration, and the feelings you have that you would like to do something, though it's not clear. So how do you, how do, you do it? How do you get to the end, as you would in a linear process? So you start in one direction. Of course, it's not the right direction. You bounce when you realize it's not the right direction. You bounce back and go to another extreme. And you keep doing that in your mind. You go from one extreme to another, and sometimes it ends up in madness. Many artists uh, are a little loopy and uh, have their problems. Van Gogh is the prime example. And sometimes if you don't go crazy, you go on and you may either get very tired 
or you may just simply fail and abandon the whole project. But even in failure, your mind is still ticking away. Uh, creative people have a lot of trouble with their mind ticking away all the time, especially at night. And somehow they start over again. They start back. And, the, and what they have in mind is a little clearer, has some reference to how they started out. But it's much more precise. And they go back and forth between these different extremes of where, where we're headed. And uh, gradually it starts to clarify. And we come to the border between the unknown, which is around us, all around us, is the potential for knowledge. It's an unrealized potential, but it's there. But with this long, arduous trip and the difficulties of it, we come to a point of creative implosion, where we break through the wall that separates knowledge and the unknown. And with that, we bring um, an idea into a physical realization. It may be a novel, it may be a poem, it may be a piece of sculpture. It can be almost anything. Um, but it comes, it comes from a, a, um, a theoretical possibility into a reality, as with this sculpture I have here. In the beginning, it was dreams and imagination. And a, and a lot of energy to do something. In the end, I have a sculpture. Not only do I have a sculpture, but by breaking through the wall between the ocean of knowledge and the unknown, I've created knowledge. And that knowledge flows back to the linear process where everybody can use it. And a young artist can look at this thing and say, wow, I like that, but I don't like the eyes. I can improve on it. I can make a better sculpture than that. And that's the way we do things. Artists look to the past, and any creative person looks to the past, and they say to themselves, I can improve upon that. And that is what, that's, is what we are living. That is what we are living. One thing, too, about this linear, the uh, creative process, is that a lot of people, when they use the linear process, they find it a little bit boring. With the creative process, it's very rarely boring. It's challenging all the way. And in the end, there's an enormous satisfaction of creating something that didn't exist before. It isn't so much people patting you on the back. If you want people to pat you on the back, take the linear course, and they'll be hitting you on the back and say, oh, you're a good child, you're, a, you're, you're brilliant, you're wonderful, uh, and we'll give you a degree, and we'll give you a job at the end of it. You don't get that with the, with the creative process. Creative process is purely a self thing and self-satisfaction self-present pleasure. And the pleasure you get is not in automobiles or pretty girls or... It's in what you have done with your hands and your mind. This is the uh, Yellow Submarine, back from the Beatles time. Uh, you always need a name for sculptures, and that seemed appropriate. Uh, unlike the Packard, this is a vehicle, but it has no wheels, and it's more a vehicle for imagination, particularly for young people. But older people get entangled with it, too.
it reached a point when I did something that didn't, wasn't happy and I wasn't satisfied with it. And I spent the whole morning uh, taking a blowtorch and, and cutting out a big section of it. And then um, I got my wife out and we looked at it and uh, I didn't know what to do, how to replace it. And uh, fortunately after another week of work, I was able to redo it. And, and I think probably what the result, I couldn't have uh, figured out in a model, maybe I would have, maybe it would have been better than what I've done. But sometimes you have to just settle for what is. And uh, so what I did end up doing um, is here and uh, it is finished. This is a chromocopter. It's a stainless steel, acrylic plastic, and some glass. And this is a more mature version of the yellow submarine. Being in stainless steel, I don't have to paint it, which is a major problem when you have sculpture outdoors. You have to maintain it, and a steel tends to need to be painted every once in a while. Stainless steel is glittery. It, it, uh, uh, doesn't need maintenance. Uh, the acrylic plastic in it um, is reflected by the uh, uh, silvery surface of the stainless steel. Children can climb up inside it. The whole idea is that they can become part of the landscape sculpture. And often I've seen kids go in, and even quite large kids go in there, and they get a dreamy look on their face as they go off into space because you're looking out from that through the colors of the kind of a kaleidoscope effect. Okay, why well, I've gone to all the trouble of explaining this, I'm sorry to be so tedious, but it is important now particularly because we have um, artificial intelligence and many of the chores that we used to have to do are taken over by mechanical devices that are guided by artificial intelligence. People are, fr are afraid now that artificial intelligent uh, entities will take over human life on Earth and beat us out of the picture. Artificial intelligence operates in the same way and, as, and, and basic to it is the linear process. Beyond the linear process, I don't know is it, people disagree with me, but they say, oh, it will take over even creative, the creative process. But if you take away, if you eat away at that um, linear process, which has been dominant for centuries and which we use in all the universities and schools, um, then what do we have? What does the average person have? I think what it, it, it's bringing about is a greater reliance on our creative process. And with that, it also allows for more individual expression of their uniqueness.
creativity and individual expression is going to be the picture in the future. I may be optimistic, but wouldn't it be nice?